Hello and welcome to another Knitting Pod. I am Lena and I'm so happy to be sitting down with you today. If you are a returning viewer, I know that you probably noticed I did not tape last week. I try to tape every single week unless I'm out of town and I let you guys know. But last week was just, it was just one of those weeks, you guys. My husband was sick and it was quite the realization that he does so much to help make our lives run smoothly. And without him, I was just worn into the ground. I had nothing left to give. And I just had to take that mental health day for myself and not tape. Um, so I am so excited to be sitting down with you because a week goes by and I have all this stuff built up to talk to you guys about. And then when I don't get to get that out and it gets dragged into a second week, it's just, anyway, this is going to be a long one. So buckle up. Um, let's see. I feel, I have to tell you, I'm feeling nervous because I'm out of practice. Like I know it's just been two weeks, but I feel like I just, I like to take one full take. I don't like to stop or edit anything. And I just fear I'm not going to be able to be eloquent enough to get everything out in a comprehensible way. But anyway, we shall be fine. We will proceed and have our chit chat as we always do. If you are new here, by the way, sorry for the chaotic um, beginning. We do talk about knitting and fiber and yarn and life and books and all sorts of other fun stuff. I usually start with yarn talk and then we end with life talk. Um, let's see, where to begin, where to begin. First of all, I'm gonna go ahead and get this out of the way. Look at this, what is this? Why must this stick straight out? I am in my mid forties, so we can't call these baby hairs anymore. I, it's just, I, I need like, remember if you watched my last video, I had that toupee tape to make my sweater stick. I think I need to stick this baby down with some toupee tape. <laughs> anyway, it's gonna distract me and it's gonna make me crazy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and acknowledge that whatever the heck this is wants to be flapping in the wind. So excuse my cow lick. Okay. What is new? I think you can see that in the two weeks that we have been apart, I cast on and completed the Soldotna crop by Caitlin Hunter. And I'm so pleased, you guys. I'm really so excited. Um, the last time I chatted with you, you, I told you that I wanted to cast this on and I had picked out two color palettes of yarn that I had in my stash to do this top. And it was like absolutely unanimous that you guys liked the second color combination. And I completely agreed. I had picked like grays and turquoise and stuff like that because I had enough quantity of those colors and I thought they went together well enough. But after sitting with it for a little bit longer, I just realized that I was not feeling inspired by any of those colors. And um, if you haven't watched that episode, I chatted about how I've never done color work. I had just gone off of doing a couple of projects that were very straightforward. The very V-neck raglan was something that I had just finished, which is stock and that, and it's absolutely the perfect project, but I just was ready for a new challenge. So I was ready to dive into color work after having been intimidated by color work for so long. Um, and so my, it was the, that weekend was local yarn shop day. And one of my favorite local yarn shops, which is Longmont Yarn Shop, if you are from the Boulder or, area or the Denver area, you might have heard of it. It is an incredible yarn shop. If you ever come to Boulder, you have to go there. It's just got this cozy mountain cabin-y vibe and it's just, I love everybody that works there. They're so lovely and anyway, so my friend wanted to go so I met my friend there and everything was 20% off and I just I couldn't resist, I couldn't resist buying yarn that really inspired me because, you know, life is too short and I just, 
I don't know, I just indulged myself. So I kind of felt a little bit guilty about that, but all's well that ends well because I love the end product. Um, I wish I could take credit for building this color palette myself, but I take zero credit. I completely lifted this color palette off of Kristen of Vine Yarn. Several years ago, she had made this exact top out of her own hand-dyed yarns. And it is the most beautiful color palette. And you guys know me, if you've watched my channel by now, you know I'm actually not drawn to muted colors at all. I'm drawn to crazy neons and pastels and just the brighter and more colorful, the better. But in this case, I just wanted this color palette. And so I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna buy it. I'm just gonna straight up copy Kristen. She just has this knack for color combinations. They're never anything I would have picked myself, but when I see it in the end product, I'm just so drawn to her color palette. And it made me realize, this is gonna sound, this is kind of makes me sad to say this, bright colors just make my heart sing and I'm just so excited by bright colors. But when it comes down to it, I think in actual garments like sweaters and tees and stuff, I think I prefer slightly more muted colors to actually wear. For instance, if you've watched my previous episodes, you know I made that birthday sweater, the Lace and Fade Boxy. I made it out of like this gorgeous, speckly seafoam colored yarn, which had the speckles were like neon and fuchsia and all this just like burst of gorgeous spring color. And I love that sweater. It turned out so beautifully, but I'm just like on a regular basis. I'm not super drawn to wearing that color. I love to look at it. And I think like in a shawl or a hat, like as an accessory, I'm super drawn to it. But when it comes to a sweater, it's just not what I reach for. As opposed to the ranunculus, um, I knit mine out of linen quill in the colorway Fresh Nutmeg, which is this just stunningly, um, this brown that has depth and small variations in the color tonality. And I just think it's so beautiful and I wanna wear it all the time. So, my point is, I feel like the more I knit, the more my color palette and my color choices evolve. And I just, I love it. I think it's so great because I, I still will always knit with color, but I think I'm more drawn to color, like I said, in shawls and stuff, or like a, the way Stephen West does it, where it's like just a ton of color explosion rather than just like one solid color, like that seafoam green. So, you know, as I work through color work, I'm really excited to work towards developing my own aesthetic for color work. Do you know what I'm saying? Like tonal colors, but maybe adding neutral, I mean, not neutral, neon pops in a way that feels fresh and, you know, authentic to me. I think there are some people that just have a gift for putting together color palettes. I don't think that is my particular gift, which is why I was totally fine, just totally lifting this color palette off of Kristen. Um, while we're here, I can just show you real quick the yarns that I used. I had this color in my stash to begin with. This is Malabrigo Rios. I believe it is the colorway Tormenta, I wanna say it's something like that. I thought I was gonna have enough for this body. I'll kind of lift up so you can see. Do you see the, the cropped body? The main part is this color. And I had an entire, like, I wanna say it was like 73 grams maybe. I didn't think I was gonna have enough for the yoke. So for the yoke, like right here where this, this color would have shown up, I used a different lighter gray because I thought if I use a different color up here, I'll have enough down here. I didn't. I actually had to go back to a different store and buy this um, color and thank goodness they still had it because I had had this in my stash for a year or two. So this is the main body color I used. It's uh, Malabrigo Rios, like I said. Here is another Malabrigo Rios color. 
Um, it is where these little arrows, this is called whole grain and I just love this color. Can you see? Um, it's not solid, it's definitely has variation and I think it's just so beautiful. My friend Julie, who I went with, she bought a whole sweaters quantity of this to make a sweater and I would totally follow suit because this color, it's just neutral enough, but it has like a blush undertone. It, it's just, I would totally wear this. And I think this would also be really pretty paired with a neon because I love that. So that's the second color. The third color is this. It is um, Dream and Color is the brand and it's their classy cashmere in the colorway The Edge. Um, it was the last skein they had of this and it is just, I mean, I think it speaks for itself. This was a really difficult color to find for me um, to pick because the one Kristen used was had more green and I just could not find anything that was similar. And I just settled for this because I loved it and I love the variation in the color. It has, I think it's like 10% cashmere. Yeah, 80% superwash merino, 10 cashmere, 10 nylon. Um, absolutely gorgeous. Like it knit up so beautifully. Can you see? I'll get a little bit closer. So the specks in the body here are these two colors. And then the background is this. Um, and the final color, this gorgeous burnt orange is um, this colorway. It was called Mochachina, Mochachino or something. Sun Valley Fibers. Um, I don't know if that's local to Colorado, but um, you can see I used it for all this part. It was supposed to be for this trim, but I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough. So I just did this part in black. And yeah, I absolutely love, 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 love this color palette. I think the leftover colors would make a gorgeous color work hat for next season or something like that. Um, the actual pattern calls for DK and I'm such a dodo bird. I, um, I just thought their DK and worsted were in the same section and I had picked out all the colors, paid for everything. When I was walking out, realized they had a completely different DK section, but I just, I did not want to deal with it. So I just figured if Stephen West always says DK and worsted are sort of interchangeable, then they're going to be interchangeable. Um, some of you have knit this project. It was a very popular a few years ago with good, you know, reason. It's absolutely beautiful, but it was too late when I read one of your comments that said that you recommended doing it in fingering weight because <laughs> I did not realize as my first color work project, how heavy and dense the fabric becomes when the yarn is heavier. So I loved it because it went by really fast. Obviously, it literally, I knit this in 10 days. Um, but I understand why most color work is in fingering weight because the density of all those floats, um, it just makes for a very heavy um, garment. But I think it's perfect for fall. Like I'm wearing it with a dress right now and it's cropped. I did exactly um, what Caitlin Hunter said in terms of the number of repeats and where I stopped it. I just loved the way hers turned out, so I just wanted to follow suit. And I do love it. I made the size small. I think it turned out to be about 38 inches, so it's a bit oversized for me, um, but I love it. I, I think I totally could have knit one size down, but I don't like tight garments. And I think for my first color work garment, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. The one thing I will say, is that the collar, I'm gonna move my hair because it's hard to see. Do you see how it stands up a little bit? And in the pattern, there's a lot of short row shaping on the back of the neck of this top part before you get to the color work. And I don't know if it's because I was using worsted weight yarn or what, because I followed the directions exactly and I've done short row shaping many, many times with no problem. But this collar, after washing and blocking this, was sticking straight up in the most unflattering way imaginable. Um, so when my daughter was so, she always gets excited um, when something's on the drying mat. So this morning she ran into the room to see if it was dry. 
and she ran out with it and I, it was dry and I was so excited to see if that collar had flattened out with um, blocking because the picture of Caitlin Hunter wearing it was nothing like the way mine turned out. Um, and sadly it hadn't, it was still sticking straight up and I was so, it was not what I wanted. So what I did was I just folded the ribbing over on the inside and then I just whip stitched it down from the inside. You know, I, I pinned it with um, stitch markers all the way around so that it would sit. And then I whip stitched it and I think it turned out perfectly. You know, I'm actually quite happy. I don't think you would be able to tell that anything went awry unless I told you, which I am telling you. I'm curious if anybody else had that issue. Um, a lot of the projects did talk about like it being too tight here or something, and I didn't find that at all. Um, I think it fits beautifully other than that, and that was an easy fix. I did that in like 10 minutes this morning. So yes, the Soldotna crop, what else did I wanna say about it? Oh, very important to tell you, how did I find, um, how did I manage to hold my yarn? Because last time I told you guys, I was very intimidated by having to work with two strands of yarn at the same time. So for the very, for the top part, I think most maybe up to like here, I was holding one strand in my left and one strand in my right, but I just could never find a smooth way to hold that yarn in the right hand. Like I could not find a way to, elegantly throw that yarn or flick it or whatever you English style knitters call it. It just wasn't working out. So I thought, let me give it a go to hold them both in my left hand, the way Kristen, Lara, the one, the Vines yarn, she has a tutorial about how she does it with on the left hand. So I practiced and I practiced and I practiced and I finally got the hang of it and game changer y'all. It was like, it's so much more fluid for me to hold it in my left hand. So easy to tension. The one thing that um, helped me get over that hump to truly being able to do it in a fluid way was that both strands really come off at of the tip of that second finger. It's not further down. They do have to be towards the top. Um, she has, if you just Google it, I mean, put it into YouTube, you'll find it. I can, I'll try to remember to put a link. I'm so bad about show notes, you guys. Everybody, any other yarn podcast, they're always like, the show notes, the show notes. And I never mention it because I hate writing show notes. They're kind of a pain. You can always ask me a question. I'll always answer it to the best of my ability. But sometimes show notes are a pain to do after all the rest of it. Anyway, my point is, I will definitely keep holding both strands in my left hand. It worked out so lovely. You know, some people wear that ring. I did not have access to that. And with just like a day of practice, I felt so comfortable with it. So if you've ever been tempted to try holding the yarn in your left hand, if you're a continental style knitter, go for it. It just, it was easy as pie. And like, you know, just keeping the, uh, mindful of the stitches being spread out so that your floats are nice and loose and comfortable enough to stretch. I am a very loose knitter, just that's the way I knit. So I thought it was very natural for me, um, but I did keep a very good eye on making sure those floats were stretched out as I was knitting. Um, I could not put this down, you guys. I, I literally, I cast this on I believe on a Sunday and I finished it in eight or nine, maybe 10 days. It was just, I could not stop knitting it. The color work is so addicting to watch that pattern. And I'm just, I'm like one of those people that loves a to-do list that's written out to cross things off. I just, there's endless joy in that for me. And that's how I felt about the chart. I'm, I print out my chart and then like getting to check off each row as I went, it was like, beyond satisfying and fun. This lived up to the anticipation so much. And my dog is snoring very loudly. Danny, shh. She's like, woman, why are you waking me up? I just don't want it to be annoying to you. Okay. So Caitlin Hunter, this was a Caitlin Hunter pattern. I have to tell you guys, 
I am such a fan of hers. She is so cool. I know that makes me sound like I'm in seventh grade, but she's just so cool. Like her whole vibe is, I just, I am so fangirl. I just, I love her style. I love everything she makes. I love how every, every one of her color work patterns is so unique, but I, I don't know. I, I am completely gonna go down that rabbit hole. I, this will not be my one and only Caitlin Hunter pattern. I don't think I will do another color work pattern like immediately because it is, like it's not easy to take on the go. Like it's not a bleachers project, but um, just because you don't wanna be juggling balls of yarn and floats while chit-chatting with other people. So it's definitely like a more focused project, but I loved it so much. I wanted to um, give you some ideas for color work patterns that have been on my radar since falling in love with this new technique. So this is not something I do often on this channel with you guys, but I pulled my favorite um, color work projects and I thought we would just chat about them and I would show them to you. I'll, I'll insert pictures of everything um, as we go. So let's start with the accessories that I had on my mind. First and foremost, the Minster um, Cowl by the lovely Linda Bjork Eric's daughter. She is incredible. She is friends with Stephen West and just has her own podcast that I love, but she hasn't posted in a long time. So I feel like I haven't seen her um, new content lately, but she was kind enough after watching my last episode to send me this pattern, which has been on my radar since I found it like last fall. And it was getting, I was too intimidated to start it then. Um, and so this coming fall, I am 100% going to make this pattern. It is so breathtaking, you guys. It is different Icelandic, like traditional Icelandic motifs in a beautiful cowl, which I, I know I would get so much use out of this, you guys, and I will tell you why. We live in Colorado where the winters are cold, obviously, but I love the idea of a cowl that is big enough to wrap around twice and you can pull the hood over your head or you can leave it down just around your neck. I love that idea because we walk our dogs every day, rain, snow, shine, it doesn't matter. And I just, it's so convenient to have something you can pull up to keep your ears warm or pull down when you don't want to have that extra layer. I just know I will use the heck out of it and I'm obsessed with the different motifs. Thank you, Linda, for sending it to me. It was just, it meant so much and I just cannot wait to make this. So put this on your radar. We're gonna be making this in the fall, you guys. So that was my first number one project is the Minster Cowl. I think it is, you could make it in so many like different colors or you could do the same color, like just two colors. You can make it muted. You could make it just a riot of color. Like I said, I think accessories are such a great place to play with brighter colors just because they make your outfits pop, but then you don't feel like you're just drenched in this bright color. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay. Second accessory is the fruit salad hat by, oh shoot, I wish I had written it down. Oh my God. The same, the same designer as the Ranunculus, Midori Hirose. Whew. It's all here, you guys, because I surely did not write that down. Um, I didn't think I, it was possible for me to forget her name because I love her so much. You know I love the Ranunculus. It's one of my favorite patterns of all time. And this hat is just joyful. I mean, the colors of this sample just, I would want to replicate this sample exactly because I'm not really drawn to primary colors, but the way these primary colors are playing together in this hat just has this retro vibe that is so appealing to me. 100% on my radar. I think it would be a fabulous hat to knit for a kiddo or for yourself. Um, yeah, so those were my two accessories that I was really drawn to in color work. The other ones are sweaters, okay? There's gonna be a few of Caitlin Hunter's patterns here because she, to me, is like 
sort of the queen of color work that like she does most of her designs have color work in them and the first one on my list is her very latest uh release actually i take that back if i had recorded this last week that would have been true but i think she did release like a very simple top um i almost said recipe top pattern this last week so this is two patterns ago it is the nay sweater nay as in a horse and I'm inserting a picture so you can obviously see the reference here now this is a bold piece I think maybe not for everybody but when I saw this I just flipped I am obsessed I want to make this so bad but it is in DK weight I think so I will not be making that right now as it is the end of May almost, middle of May. But again, this is another pattern just like the Minster Cowl. I will be visiting in the fall and I anticipate enjoying it a lot and wearing it a lot. Just because it's like, I love cowboy boots. I love wearing cowboy boots. And like to me, this sweater in an oversized fit with leggings and cowboy boots dream it's just it's that caitlin hunter cool girl vibes that i just aim for that is like my she's a, an icon a style icon to me but anyway i'm obsessed my favorite colorway that i've seen the color um story is the farmer's daughter fiber one um that's the one i'm going to show you it's like a very light peachy background i think with more of a fuchsia the horses are in fuchsia and I really think I would make one of those horses a unicorn because I love unicorns. So anyway, super jazzed about this pattern. I think there's a lot of um, very long floats, but there were a couple times in this pattern that I had to catch floats and I thought it was so fun that I, I honestly don't think um, I would mind catching floats too much. Okay, what's next? Another Caitlin Hunter. It is not a new pattern, but I fell in love with this pattern the second I saw it. It is the Sunset Highway Pullover. It is in a fingering weight yarn, so I actually do think I might make that this summer when I've recovered from... Sorry, I'm going to take a sip of water. When I've recovered from this one, from the work of this one, I might cast on a Sunset Highway. And again, the colors that she picked are so absolutely beautiful and i love that it's a wider neck so i'm i hope it wouldn't have this problem i'm so sorry my nose is itchy i don't know why i have no mohair to blame for my itchy nose but anyway i love the sunset highway pullover there is even a mini sunset highway that would be so fun i would love to have matching sunset highways with my daughter um so yeah i bet a lot of you have made it it's just thousands of Ravelry projects, but it's just, again, it's oversized. It has this like peanuts vibe in the seventies. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like Charlie Brown would wear this sweater. I just, I'm obsessed. Okay, moving on. A non Caitlin Hunter color work project. The Liska by, oh, for the love of God, I'm sorry. I did not write her name down and I definitely do not remember her name, right? Is it, I wanna say it's Brienne Moody, but it might not be. I will write it with the picture here. It is so whimsical and adorable. I fell in love with this when I saw it. I love the color palette she has in this picture. I think Ritual Dyes actually had kits for this sweater with these exact colors and I think it's just absolutely beautiful. I think it's, she's done more colorful colors in such a lovely way. It's not overdone, it's not, I think it's wearable. I just, and I love the animal heads on this pattern. That's one of the things I love about color work is there's something whimsical about adding animals into these patterns like that's what i love about linda's also there's like these chickens they're so i just love it i just think it's so cute and 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 a cute in a not like a little kid way anyway i don't know so this list guy i think it's beautiful i don't remember if it's dk or fingering but um i know there's some mohair there's some fuzz in there 
Um, and I think it is absolutely beautiful. The next project that is on my radar with color work is the Cottage Swancho by Olga Putano. I have my cheat sheet here. Um, a very incomplete cheat sheet because I've missed a couple of names. But this piece is absolutely beautiful. I love the silhouette. I think in the color work world, it is unique um, as far as sweaters go. It has like that uh, swancho, sweater poncho, uh, v. Um, I love the pattern. I love the colors. I love it. it looks so easy to wear. It looks cozy. I'm 99% sure it's a DK or worsted weight, so it is another project to be, you know, undertaken in the cooler months for sure. But I love this pattern. It is, um, I think there's just so many ways you could go with the color, and it's just, it looks like it would be wearable for so many body types. Um, I know Andrea Maury does a lot of gorgeous color work, but hers are always very body conscious, and I don't know sometimes when I haven't seen it in a more oversized silhouette, I'm not sure how it would read. Do you know what I mean? Like the designer, like she looks fabulous in her more fitted garments. I just, I don't know what it would look like in an oversized way, but this Swan Show to me has the beauty of color work and you can see it's oversized and still looks absolutely gorgeous. So it fits my aesthetic and it fits the way I like my clothes to fit me. Next up, I don't know how to say this word, Noctude? That doesn't sound right. Anyway, you guys, I think this is the most beautiful piece. It is just breathtaking. It, there are these gorgeous moths all over and you know I love butterflies and moths so much I they are just they hold such a dear place to me because to me they symbolize evolution and the beauty in pushing through the fear of change that we all have so I feel like I need to make this for myself like it needs to happen but I have to tell you it's very intimidating because look at how much color work it's an all over color work that is like not for the faint of heart. It looks very complicated. I just even think picking yarn would be complicated. I, I don't know, I'm intimidated by this piece, but maybe somewhere down the line, it's very aspirational to me. The designer is Catherine Clark. Um, yeah, I think she's she has a couple of different patterns that are also gorgeous. And at Rhinebeck, no, Wool and Folk last year when I was there, I was standing in line with my daughter to meet Andrea Maury and the lovely um, gal behind me was wearing um, one of her designs, Catherine Clark's color work designs. And I was just, we chatted for a long time in line because I was just blown away by the beauty of the garment she had made. And just at that time, it just seemed so far out there. And it just goes to show that knitting is a skill just like any other skill that you think certain things are so out of reach, but if you keep building the skills like one skill at a time, we can absolutely end up reaching those things that felt so out of our skill level before. You know what I mean? Just like anything, uh, literally any knowledge base, you can get there. You just, you can't get there all at once. You have to have the patience to build up those skills one at a time. The final piece here that I will share with you is called Antique Flora by Wool and Pine Designs. This is such a beauty. I mean, again, this model is stunning. The colorways are stunning. She's rocking this sweater. I think it is a heavier weight sweater, so maybe not for the summer, but I, I just, the motifs are beautiful. Color work, it's just, there's no end to the creativity. And I love how it looks like in this um, garment, they've used a color shifting yarn for the motif. So you actually are only holding two colors, but getting the effect of that gradient yarn is just, it's stunning. I love it. That is it for my little list that I wanted to share with you. Hopefully you found some of those inspiring because color work is just fun. You know, like this is what I love about knitting. There's, you can find a project to suit 
any mood. And even if you are a color work expert, I think color work is always very engaging just because you do have to pay attention to the charts and some people don't like that. I had a friend who's very creative and um, a, very much a maker, but just didn't love knitting because she didn't feel like there was any freedom within knitting. It was very regimented, like you had to follow a pattern and count stitches. And I guess I'm just a very type A person because I love that. I love the structure and creativity, how they meld. Like just freestyle painting does not suit me because I don't know. I just, I wouldn't even know where to begin. Do you know what I mean? Whereas like, I love the structure of knitting and how you can bring your own vision and creativity to it. But there's, you know, there are guidelines. I'm a structured person, you guys. I don't know if it was, if it's just how I am or how I was raised or both. Then they combined into just being this kind of rigid person. But anyway. Okay. What else? I... I, like I said, did not work on anything else while I was doing this. And like I told you before, my husband was sick and it was just a very lonely week because he was so out of commission. He was just in bed, miserable. And I was just taking care of everything. You know, we have two big dogs and we usually walk them together. And when I wasn't able, when we weren't able to walk them together, I was having to walk them apart because they're too strong for me to walk together because they're crazy. Um, they've knocked me down before and never again. So I walked them separately. So it was like walking five miles a day, teaching fitness classes, taking care of the kids, cooking meals for everybody, you know, various, you know, needs. And it was just, this was my sanctuary during that time of, you know, I would just sit down and get to like, block out everything else and just fall into this. And so it really it got me through a tough week and um, I love it. I don't know where I was going with that. I got distracted. Oh, I was saying I didn't really work on anything else. So when I finished this, by the way, there's like 40,000 ends inside this sweater that you can't see that are not woven in. <laughs> but I just wanted to share it with you. I wanted to wear it and show it. Um, I will weave in those ends, it'll get done, but um, color work definitely leaves a lot of ends. But after this was completed, I did pick up the interminable big rib again. You guys, this is the opposite of this. Like this I could not put down and I probably could have finished it even quicker if I had applied myself even more. This is mindless and at this point so uninspiring that I just cannot finish it. I finally, finished the second sleeve. I think this is the second sleeve. I don't even remember now. However, no, it's this one. I can, I'll tell you why I know it's this one. I was so keen on just freaking finishing the sleeve that I had counted the rows on this, but completely had forgotten that the end, you go from four by four ribbing to two by two ribbing for just like a little cuff. But like, look at this, it's floofiness and the big gauge, it's just kind of chaotic looking. Like it's not super obvious that this is different. And I completely forgot and in my almighty rush to just get this the hell off my needles, I forgot to do that one two by two ribbing and I just bound off. And only when I was thinking about picking up the stitches for the neck band, again, interminable, did I remember that I messed that up? But did I do anything to fix it? Nope, definitely not. I could care less. Seriously, this could be three inches shorter than this sleeve and I still wouldn't have fixed it. I, I just cannot. I cannot deal with this anymore. I want it off. I want it I love it. Like I told you guys before, it's beautiful on and it's really soft and lovely to wear. It's Melted Baby Surrey Alpaca by Ching Fiber. This is 100% a product knit and not a process knit. Zero shade for Jessie Mae Designs. I love her. You know I do. This garment just wasn't it for me. I just... I will never, ever, ever knit 
anything out of full ribbing again in my life. And I, I don't even know why that is. I mean, I do know that I don't like how the tension of the stitches is so difficult to make look nice because it's not just the knits and the pearls. I don't mind seed stitch at all. I have a garment that I'm dying to make in moss stitch, but there's just something about all over ribbing. I, Sharon, my friend Sharon was 100% correct. No, thank you. So this is it. This is the one and only time that I'm going to make something like that. So hopefully I get it up to finish this very easy neckline, which is again, it's picking up stitches, which I don't love. It's ribbing, which I don't wanna do, but I want this in the bathtub and on a blocking mat so I can just enjoy it and stop working on it. So I'm not wasting any more time talking about that. What is on my needles right now? I just cast on yesterday. It took me a while to figure out what I wanted to cast on. I knew it was just like the opposite of when I started this. Now that I've finished this, I want something kind of mindless. And after much kind of casting about in my um, Ravelry library and favorites, I decided upon the Open Edge Tea by Jessie May. I don't know why I'm in a Jessie May phase. I just cannot stop with her patterns. I'll insert a picture. Um, because what I have so far is a tiny baby. This is the bottom, it is a bottom up summer tee. It's a V-neck, this is the ribbing. Um, but don't worry, the ribbing is, oh, I only have like half an inch. And then it has this gorgeous detail that um, if you close up on the picture, until I really looked at it, I didn't see what was special about this garment. It's very simple, but what is special is there's this, yarn over detail that creates this edging. Um, it's just beautiful. It's such a thoughtful detail, which is what I love about her. She has this knack for editing down the details to be so impactful because the rest of the garment is so simple that that detail just shines and really just makes that garment unique. So. I am knitting it in um, my leftover linen quill in that fresh nutmeg colorway I was talking about earlier. I had originally bought this for something else that did not pan out. So I had three skeins of this and this is such a generous yarn. It's 100 grams and like 437 yards, I believe, is how much is in this. That is a lot of yarn. Not to mention, it's such a reasonably priced yarn. It comes on sale so much. It's Pearl Soho. It comes on sale so much. I think I got this at Christmas time for like $15, less than $15 a skein. It's a linen alpaca wool blend. It's just one of my absolute favorite yarns. I've talked about it so much. There are so many colorways from neutrals to brights to pastels, just infinite colors. I'm obsessed. And I was just feeling like because I unexpectedly bought yarn for this guy, I wanted to use some yarn I already had. And I have to be honest with you guys, I know it's the middle of May and we're moving towards summer, but I am just not in the mood for summer yarns yet. Like I'm just not feeling cottons or linens or anything. I'm still like craving like mohair and woolly things, woolly warm things. Maybe that's because it's been so rainy here and I've loved every second of it. It's just, I think it has literally rained for three days without stopping and it's glorious. Like I wish you could sit on my couch, which is my happiest place on the planet and look out this window. It's just green and the flowers are bursting and the aspen trees are getting those gorgeous limey fresh buds on them just it is so stunning like I love winter and it's so easy for me to forget how gorgeous the green is when it's coming in in spring so I'm feeling the springy vibes big time right now it's cool it's rainy and I am not feeling cotton that was the whole point. This has a little linen in it, so I felt it would count, and it's such a thin weight yarn, and this is a V-neck short sleeve t-shirt, so I figure 
even though it's not cotton and linen, um, I will get to wear it this summer regardless. And I know, um, like, I just want a staple in a very, like a color I love that's not super bright, and this is it. I don't know why I'm obsessed with this color, but I love the way it's almost skin tone for me, and it just, I just love it. It makes me feel very happy when I wear it. Like when I wear my ranunculus in this, I feel like my insides match my outsides. That I've told you that's kind of my guiding principle with clothes and this is a yarn that makes me feel that way. So I'm enjoying working on this and I think it'll be a quick, soothing, easy, this is definitely gonna be a bleacher knit because when you get to the body, it's just stuck in it in the round, which is always joyful. Okay. Oh boy, 45 minutes. I knew this was going to be a long one because I haven't talked to you guys in two weeks now. I've got other stuff to tell you. I finally am remembering to announce the winner of that giveaway I was doing. If It feels like a million years ago now because so much time has passed. But if you have watched, you know that I was doing a birthday giveaway. My birthday was at the end of March and I was gonna do a giveaway where if you went and subscribed on my new Instagram page for this channel and left me a comment telling me what your favorite knitting pattern was, I was just gonna pick a random winner from that and I did get to pick the winner and it is Caitlin. Um, Caitlin, who is so, so lovely and who feels to me truly like a friend at this point because we've messaged each other so much in the comments section and she's just the loveliest person and I was thrilled when I picked her name because um, a, every one of you if I could send you a gift I totally would seriously that's how much I adore everybody that is engaged in this community but it just made me so happy that somebody who I feel like truly I look forward to meeting in person someday, and I really, really believe I will get to meet her someday. Um, I'm really excited to send her um, some knitting goodies. So I showed you some of the things a couple of months ago, I think, like some mini skeins and some knitting accessories that I absolutely love and can't live without. I got some for Caitlin, so I'm going to send those her way and I um, hope it brings her a little bit jo of joy. So thank you, Caitlin, for being so incredible. She's also a nurse, which holds such a special place in my heart right now and forevermore. I mean, always in my experiences, like having babies, like the nurses were the ones that just make it all possible. But with my mom's recent surgery that you guys know, she had a major back surgery and those nurses, I just, they are angels, like literally through and through. They give so fully with so much love and patience and they just work so hard and their job is so taxing. And I just am thrilled that this little package will go to a nurse who gives that love to the people she encounters every day. And I don't know. Caitlin, you're just inspirational to me. She was just so kind through my mom's surgery and sent so much support and love and kindness to me that I'm excited to hopefully give her a little kindness in return. So yay. Yay for Caitlin. Another fun milestone for me was that a couple weeks ago, I hit a thousand subscribers here on YouTube. Oh, I, it's just... It's such a weird thing, you guys. Like, I started this YouTube channel at the very end of last year after having wanted to do this for years now and having talked myself out of doing this for years because it was just terrifying. Like, the prospect of putting yourself out there publicly and it just felt like the likelihood that anybody other than my family would watch this was just, it was a pie in the sky dream for lack of a more modern <laughs> metaphor. It just felt like impossible. Like why, how, how on earth would anyone find it? Why would anyone care what I had to say? But it was one of those dreams that was like, I knew 
I would just be filled with regret and self-loathing if I didn't try. And so I just made a deal with myself that I would try it for a year. I would post a video every week for one year. And at the end of that year, I could reevaluate whether I should keep going or not. And that until that year was up, even if I had two subscribers, my husband and my son, because my daughter does not have any technology, um, even if it was just the two of them, I didn't care. I was going to post every day. And at the end of that year, I felt like then it would be like good enough of a try that I could quit if I wanted to. And that felt like good enough of a try, but also it gave me a way out. Anyway, all that to say, never in my wildest dreams did I think I would find an audience for which what is basically just <laughs> stream of consciousness video streaming. Um, but it's just been life-changing. I mean, I, it, I'm i telling you honestly when I say I think about you guys every single day. Every day when things happen to me and it's not just fiber, it's life, I can't wait to tell you and I can't wait to share it with you and I can't wait to get your thoughts back because there's so much wisdom and life in each and every one of you. And when you share that in the comment section, other people read it and gain from it. And I read it and it's it just plants all these seeds inside of me that I feel like because of you and all the seeds that you have planted inside of me, like there's just this new field of wildflowers in my heart. That's what it feels like. And I'm gonna start crying because I'm a crier. That's what I am. I'm just cannot control emotions at all. So apologies, but I did not think I would get to a thousand um, that quickly. And it's funny because, you know, I got to a thousand and I was just thrilled because I know it's arbitrary, honestly, it's, it's an arbitrary marker, but it just felt like meaningful to me. And then in the same breath, there was, there was a time, you know, I was saying my husband was sick and I was very worn down and I don't think I was taking great care of myself because, you know, I told you a million times, I teach fitness and it takes a lot out of me to um, work that hard and motivate that hard and scream and yell the whole time I'm doing it. It's just a lot of, you know, output. And then parenting is a lot of output and then taking care of the animals is a lot of output and doing these podcasts is a lot of output. It takes a lot of energy to give from, from the truest place. And that day I was just absolutely ready to tape. I was so excited to be able to talk about hitting that thousand mark. And then I was getting ready and I was all ready and I was curling my hair and I burned myself really bad with my curling iron on my neck. And like just instantly, it was just like this, I knew I couldn't tape that day. I just was like, like I said, completely ready to go. Everything was set up to tape. But I knew the minute I pressed record, I was just gonna like start sobbing or something. I just felt worn out and like I had nothing positive to give. And so I gave myself the grace to listen to what was happening and just give myself a week to recollect my thoughts. And, you know, it was just this weird thing. Like I felt so worn out. And in that space of being worn out, it was like those voices of doubt of, why are you so excited about a thousand? There's podcasters out there with 10,000 and you're excited about a thousand? Like, all those inner demons just were like, oh, she's not, she doesn't have a lot of energy right now. Let's swarm in and make her feel really bad. And it was just this weird thing that happened for a few days last weekend where I was like, all the pride and excitement I had for hitting a goal that I had for myself just got flipped inside out and like all the self-doubt and, you know, negativity just seeped in and I just I just wanted to share that with you because 
it's just another external way we validate ourselves. Like we've been talking a lot about, you know, body image and beauty and weight and how we use these external things to validate ourselves and to measure our self-worth. And it was like, I think sometimes I, there's always this fear of the podcast becoming another one of those external measuring sticks for measuring whether I'm doing well or not. You know what I mean? Like how easily you can hit an external goal and feel like it should give you self-worth, but in the next breath, it can be the exact thing that takes away your self-worth. That ex anytime we externalize whether we feel good about ourselves, that thing can be turned around into a negative right away. It's like if you are trying to lose weight and you're thinking, if I just lose 50 pounds, then I will feel good about myself. I promise you when you hit that 50 pounds, you'll feel really good for like five minutes. And then in the next five minutes, you're going to be like, well, I could lose more and then I look even better. Or how do I know I can even maintain this? All that. You're only going to be happy when you decide you're going to be happy, right? Like, I'm only going to be happy when I realize it's the sharing and the community and the honesty between us that gives me joy and it has nothing to do with the number of subscribers I have. It is showing up and being authentic with you guys and giving you a slice of my insides and it doesn't matter if it's 10 people or 100 people or 1,000 people. It really, really, really doesn't. And it was just that those voices of doubt was such a good reminder, first of all, that we all have those voices inside of us. And when we're down and they pipe up, we can acknowledge them and we can give them space and listen without no, without thinking that they're right or without believing them and also without just trying to ignore them because I think sometimes when we just try to push it away, they just get stronger. So it's like those self-doubt, I can acknowledge it and I can also release it and know that it's just, it's not real. It's, it is absolutely just ghosts in the dark. You know what I mean? It's, it's not real and we can choose to acknowledge them and then release them. So that is my story about hitting a thousand and because you know, nothing simple up here. Nothing is simple. I always have to make everything complicated, but that's who I am. And that's what we do here. We talk about the gray areas because it's so easy to think it's black and white, that I feel good when this happens and I'll feel bad if that happens. But really there's so much in between in the worst moments that's where so much growth is. And in the best moments, there can be shadows there too. However, I do want to acknowledge all of you and do something fun. So here's my idea for celebrating a thousand subscribers. I want to do a knit along. Now, I have never done a knit along. And by that, I don't mean I have never hosted a knit along. I've never participated in a knit along. I'm sort of a loner in this way. I don't like book clubs. I don't, I like to march to the beat of my own drummer. I do not like anyone to tell me what to do. I want to go where I feel inspired. Like if I want to read something, I'm going to read something. I'm not going to read it because someone else chose it for me. Anyway, however, this is a knit along that will be very, uh, it's a very, choose your own adventure knit along. And it is, I'm going to call it, or I am calling it, the what's your word knit along. Okay, I'm gonna pause and explain where I came up with this idea. There is a Instagram account. Her name is Sarah from The Scrupulous Stitch. I don't know how I, oh, I do know how I stumbled across her. I stumbled across her because Hedgehog Fibers had reposted her a sweater she had made because <clears throat> she had knit it in their fiber and it was stunningly beautiful. And I, my breath was just taken away when I saw it. I think I was in, it was in the mountains because it was, a, we were on a ski trip and because I remember 
how impactful this picture was to me. I'm gonna put a picture up for you. I just like, it was breathtaking. And I don't know her at all, Sarah, the scrupulous stitch, but I, um, I just had to be that weird person that direct messaged her on Instagram because she also happened to be living in Dallas, Texas, which is where I'm originally from. So I was just like, oh my God, Sarah, your, your sweater is so stunning and I'm from Dallas and I wish when I lived there, I had met her because there's just so few people that I'd ever met in Dallas that were makers uh, of the making lifestyle. Anyway, so she, I'm going to show you this picture so you can see what it is, but it's just a gorgeous, simple black sweater, but she has duplicate stitched the word we on like up on the chest. And I just, I loved this idea. I love this idea of adding a word or words or maybe a phrase. Maybe it's funny. Maybe it's inspirational. Maybe it's something you need to be reminded of. But I just want you to pick a word or words and put it in any knit. It could be a hat. It could be a shawl. It could be a sweater. It could be a summer tank. It could be absolutely anything. It could be super bold the way she has we in neon. Or it could be hidden. It could be on the inside hem. It could be like really, really subtle. You could do color work. You could do duplicate stitch for it. You could embroider the word. I just think it would be really fun to do a cow, a knit along where we all get to see the other, your words or your word. What inspires you? what you want to say to the world and put it on your garment or your accessory. Um, let me know what you think. If you have no interest, my feelings won't be hurt, but I think it'll be a really fun thing. Sweet Tracy of Grizzly Knits was kind enough to help me figure out what one is supposed to do to host a knit along because I don't know. And I think you've noticed I'm on an Instagram poster. I'm trying you guys, but it just doesn't feel Oh, I just, I think I really struggle with pictures. I think I love this YouTube medium because I can represent myself how I feel and fully with my words. Um, but a picture just does not feel like me. Like when I take up, when a picture is presented to me of myself, I just feel like all I want to do is delete it. I just, it does not feel right. It just does not feel like me. It just, I don't like it. So I'm struggling with Instagram. However, post with this hashtag. I think that's what you do, right? You just make up a hashtag. I don't know. I got to look into this. We'll, we'll work it out. But, um, I think, let me figure out what the hashtag will be. Maybe hashtag what's your word, Cal, K-A-L. I think I'll try to figure out if I can do it that way. Cause I'm thinking about the apostrophe. <laughs> See, I should have planned this better. But anyway, I'm thinking for my word, I think my word is going to be enough. A couple of months ago, I was scrolling through the notes on my phone because it's where I put random things all the time, like grocery list and songs for class and exercises I want to teach and patterns and colors and it is a mishmash of all the craziness in here. Before I forget it, I just type it into my phone real quick. And I was trying to delete old notes in my phone. And I came across a note that said, the opposite of more is enough. And like when I came across this very old note in my phone, it just like blew my mind. I loved that so much that we often think, the opposite of more is less, but actually the opposite of wanting more, wanting to be more, wanting to have more is recognizing that you have enough, you are enough. And I just, I feel like if we can learn that one thing, if I can be reminded of my enoughness and my life's enoughness, that I can live in the present moment and be happy with things just as they are right now. That I don't need more yarn and I don't need more subscribers and I don't need more recognition. I don't need more money. I don't need more anything. My husband would add dogs to that list, I think. 
She doesn't need more dogs. I have enough. And I want to like sink into that enoughness. So I think my word will be enough, but I'm, I'm tossing it around. I also think I'm going to do a really simple t-shirt, like a summer t-shirt, because I'm just so inspired by Sarah's version. I think I'm going to do something similar. And I also told you guys I have two skeins of the Hedgehog Fibers Tweety in a gray color. So I think that would be a great way to use that yarn in a like looser silhouette because I think that yarn is a bit scratchy. I don't want it to be super tight. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Please tell me what you think um, and what you think your word might be. And maybe it'll inspire me to post more on Instagram even if it's not pictures of me, maybe just pictures of yarn. You know what I mean? And then I would be able to see all your amazing pictures because you guys are so inspiring. Oh my gosh, so many words. My mouth is tired, my throat is dry. My dog is still snoring. If you hear it, I apologize. Um, real quick, I will tell you, I have been listening to so many audiobooks what I'm going to tell you real quick so that I, you have some recommendations, but I'm not going to blather on about them, I promise, because I know it's been over an hour at this point. Um, Paulina Portskova, yes, the supermodel from the 80s. She has published a new book of essays called No Filter. I was scared I was going to forget. No Filter. I don't, I think I, I was introduced to her book through a podcast that I had downloaded where she was, this journalist was interviewing Polina Portskova and the interview was so fascinating that I was totally inspired to download her book and listen to it. And I'm so glad I did. It is just so beautiful. And yes, let's just go ahead and acknowledge it's not fair for someone to be that beautiful and also eloquent and intelligent as she is, but God gives with both hands <laughs> for her. Um, she's just spectacular. I highly recommend that mem the, it's sort of memoir essays. If you are looking for inspiration to accept your whole self and to be convinced that it doesn't matter how beautiful you are, your even the most beautiful woman in the world is still filled with not enoughness and self-doubt. Go read it, go listen to it if you like listening to audiobooks. I think it's so great because it's like these digestible essays that don't have to be, you know, read in one sitting. Um, and her life has just been quite an adventure. I didn't know anything about her, but she is so inspirational. She talks about her struggles through life and how she's overcome them so beautifully. I think a lot of you would really resonate with her. So go check that out. Another fiction book I just finished was called Half Moon, The Half Moon by Mary Beth Keen, who also wrote a book called Ask Again Yes um, a couple years ago, which was absolutely spectacular. So if you've never read Ask Again Yes, please check it out. It is beautiful. And The Half Moon is absolutely just as beautiful. It's such a great story. Um, just one content alert. It has to do a lot with infertility um, and the struggles of a woman who desperately wants to have a baby and is struggling to do so. So if that is a sensitive topic, do not read that book maybe. Um, but it is because I've struggled with that kind of stuff and I don't know that I would have coped well with that book at that point in my life. Um, but if you are so drawn, go check that out. There is so much new fiction coming out this summer. I'm so excited. Um, I have a couple of books that I'm choosing from right now, but I don't know what I'm going to read next. But when I figure it out, you'll be the first to know. Okay, I think I'm going to leave you here. I'm sorry for just if I wasn't as eloquent as I could have been, but I'm out of practice. It's been a doozy of a couple of weeks for me. Um, I'm happy to say I feel like life is settling down just in time for school to get out and life to be a complete tornado for three months, but we'll figure that out as we go. 
So for now, I will say goodbye to you. I hope you're having a lovely May, and I hope if you are celebrating Mother's Day this weekend, just have a lovely one. If you are a mother, know that you are a superhero and to celebrate the mothers in your life also. I will talk to you very soon, okay? Bye.